I just released a video showing the new VS Code extension version 2. And uh, with that, I showed how to set it up from scratch uh, with a fresh environment. Uh, in this video, I'm just going to really quickly show you how to upgrade because there's a few things that might look a little different. Just want to make sure you have this as a reference in case that's the path you're going down. For more details about what the interface looks like to run and how you use the uh, asset bundles with this, um, go check out the other video and you can just skip across uh, the part where I do the install. So with that, let's jump right into the upgrade. So here I've upgraded, having used the previous version, I've upgraded the 2.4.2 of the Databricks extension, which is the current version as of this video. And so um, I'm going to go ahead and try to set this up after being set up in a prior version, uh, though I will say that I've changed uh, some of my profiles. So we're going to start fresh on the profile side, which is what I'd recommend for you as well. So rather than take the default profile, which is the only remaining one from before, um, I would suggest you choose between OAuth or personal access token here, though you can go the Azure CLI route if you know you have AZ command line installed. So what it's going to do is it's going to take a look at what's in my bundle. This is a project with an existing bundle. And so it knows that I have a target of dev and I'm going to go ahead and OAuth to dev. And it's picking up the environment, the host that I would connect to for my dev environment. So now it's created a new profile saved in the normal location .databricks CFG. if you ever need to go and modify that. Uh, and it's going to try to connect to the workspace. How it knows where it should connect is all based on, in this new version, on what's in your databricks.yaml. So jumping back to here, it has caught up. It knows about um, the cluster I want to use. It knows about the profile. I think it knows the cluster because I've used that in the past. And it gives me the option of when I do run bundles, if I want to override jobs clusters to use this already turned on and, and used cluster, which is an option for you. Um, what it hasn't set up yet is a Python environment for you to work with. So it's going to require me to have Python 3.11. The reason for 3.11 is because I have a 15.4 cluster attached. If I were to have a 14.3 cluster, then Python 3.10 would be okay. So I'll go ahead and get the correct version for the cluster I want to use. Yours may vary depending on which cluster you're using. I've already got 3.11 installed on my machine. Um, so really what I should do is create a virtual environment and use 3.11 as the base for that environment. Let me show real quick what happens if I try to skip that and not create a virtual environment. So in that case, uh, Visual Studio Code has made a change down at the bottom right and it knows which environment to use, but we can't um, do all of the install because it's not a virtual environment. This is expecting a virtual environment in the 2.4.2 version that I'm running. This might change. It might be that we get some more clear language about the requirement for virtual environment. Either way, my recommendation is create a virtual environment, whether it requires you to or not. Uh, you can choose between these options. I usually use VMV, and then I'm going to say delete and recreate because I don't remember what all I have going on. I think that 3.11 is new for this project, and I want to make sure I get a fresh start. Like a good Python developer, I have pip requirements install, uh, set up somewhere. In this case, I use the requirements.txt and requirements.dev.txt. Um, there are other options you can use with this, but this is what we'll use for now. So it's going to go ahead and build up that virtual environment with Python 3.11. Once it does that, we'll see that this experience on the left side makes a change, and then I can install Databricks Connect, though I might have included that in my requirements, which skips a little bit of a step you may have to do on your side. Okay, so now that my virtual environment's ready, it shows the information here. Uh, it's got the Databricks version that uh, I need for the cluster I'm using. Just to double check, um, I did have Databricks Connect specified and uh, greater than in my environment. Uh, if you do need a specific version, for instance, serverless at the moment requires a specific version, you can do an equal sign, double equals, and put the right version there. All right, moving forward, now that I've got this set up, um, I can see the bundle information all is here. I can see the variables that are set at the bundle and I can go and do things like I used to be able to in the old version and run notebooks as a, uh, run a file as a workflow. I can run 
upload and run a file. And I can use Databricks Connect to run from this environment and basically run step by step, either for debugging or just because I have a notebook and want to run one cell at a time. And that's how we did the upgrade. Just a reminder that I have more details about running this and doing the asset bundles portion of this in my other video. Thanks for watching. See you next time.